make this crocheted watermelon wall hanger, you're going to need some red worsted weight yarn, some black worsted weight yarn. All of the yarn that I'm using is Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn. And two different shades of green worsted weight yarn. We'll also need a sharp pair of scissors. Um, these are my go-to scissors when I need to cut fringe or pom-poms. A 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. This one is Clover Amore brand, which is my favorite. I will also be using my Clover Pom Pom Maker. This is the 65 millimeter and it is the, it's like the second biggest, but not the biggest, that come in a set that I have linked in the blog post for you guys. And last, you will need a tapestry needle for sewing in your ends. I'm just going to be following right along with the pattern for this video tutorial. And we're going to start with our red worsted weight yarn. And for row one, it says to make a magic ring and single crochet 10 into the magic ring. So let me do that again slower. So we're going to do a magic circle or a magic ring. And then we're going to single crochet 10 into the center of the magic circle. That's one, two, three. The pattern says to close your magic circle pulling your tail, join into the top of the first single crochet, and chain one. For row two, the pattern says to do a single crochet increase in each stitch around for a total of 20 single crochets. A single crochet increase is just two single crochets in the same stitch. We'll start right here in the first single crochet. One, two for the increase. We're gonna do that nine more times until we have 20 total stitches in this row. Join back into the top of the first single crochet. chain one and after row two we are going to turn our work before we start row three. Row three says to bobble in the first stitch so that's this guy right here and we're going to put a bobble, a bobble stitch right there, yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, that's one. over, pull through all loops on your hook, and that completes our bobble stitch. You may notice that I yarn under sometimes instead of yarning over. Um, it won't affect this pattern, so you do it however you're comfortable with. If you notice my hands look a little different than yours when you're working, it won't affect the finished outcome of the pattern. Now we're going to start a single crochet in the next stitch. But before we finish, so we'll just insert our hook, grab our yarn, pull up a loop. Instead of grabbing and pulling through the loops, we're going to switch to our black yarn and get ready to make our black seed bobbles. So instead of pulling this guy through like normal, we're going to grab our black yarn, pull it through to finish out the single crochet. Now we're going to pull our red in onto the wrong side of our work. This is the right side. This is the wrong side. The right side is the side that the bobbles pop out on. And we're going to do another bobble stitch right here in the next stitch. 
yarn over, insert your hook, grab your yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, that's one, yarn over, insert your hook, grab your yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, that's two, three, four, yarn over, pull through all the loops on your hook to finish out the bobble. And we're gonna go in the next stitch for a single crochet. But again, instead of finishing it out with our black yarn, we're gonna switch back to our red yarn. So just kind of pull it over here, back to where we need it, and pull through both loops on your hook to finish out the stitch. Now we are going to bobble with our red yarn and we're going to be working over our black yarn. So we're going to pull our black yarn along with us so we will have it at the ready when we need to make another black seed. So we're going to make a bobble stitch right here with our red yarn while working over our black yarn. We can just give this guy a tug and keep it taut the entire way around. Single crochet. And we're going to bobble in the next stitch again. It's a little hard to work around the yarn, but we can fix it as we go. our black yarn, make sure it's taut, and then single crochet in the next stitch. Keep our black yarn out of the way. But instead of finishing out the stitch, we're going to pick up our black yarn, give it one more pull, make sure it's taut underneath these stitches over here and not clumpy or sticking out in between the stitches, and finish out that single crochet. Now pull our red tail and pull it to the side and we're going to work with our black yarn again and make another bobble stitch. So right here in the next space, we're going to do another bobble. Start our next single crochet and then finish it out by switching to red. We're going to do a bobble stitch in the next stitch with our red yarn working over our black yarn. our black yarn as we go and let's do another bobble with our red yarn. Then single crochet in the next stitch but we are going to finish out the single crochet with our black yarn, so pull it taut to make sure it's not messy underneath these stitches. Pull through two, and pull our red onto this side, and do a bobble stitch in the next space with your black yarn. Go for a single crochet in the next stitch, but finish it out with the red. And now you can just leave your black dangling here. We're getting ready to cut it. We won't be using black anymore for the rest of this row. Do another bobble. Mm -hmm. 
in another single crochet. One more bobble. And we're gonna end with a single crochet. Join into the top of the first stitch. Chain one and turn our work. So we can see the front side again. We can go ahead though and clip this black yarn off. And we will pick that up again in a couple rows. For row four, we're going to single crochet in the first stitch and then increase in the next stitch. Repeat that nine more times for a total of 30 single crochet stitches around. So single crochet in the next stitch, increase in the next stitch, that's two. We've got eight more times to make that repeat. And we are going to end on an increase for 30 stitches. Join into the top of our first single crochet and chain one. For row five, we're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch around for a total of 30 single crochets. One, two, and 30. Join into the top of the first single crochet, chain one. Now we're going to single crochet, single crochet, single crochet increase, and we're going to do that for a total of 10 times, giving us a total of 40 stitches in the round, or row. I don't really know the difference, honestly. Single crochet, single crochet, increase. That's one. We're going to do that until we have it 10 times. Single crochet, single crochet, increase. That's two. Eight more to go. Now we have 40 single crochet stitches all the way around. Join into the top of our first single crochet chain one and now we're going to turn our work again because we're getting ready to do another bobble row. To start row seven, we're going to bobble in the first stitch, single crochet in the next stitch. We're going to do that for a total of five times. So bobble single one, bobble single two, bobble single three, and for a total of five times. But on the fifth single crochet, we're going to switch to our black yarn. That's one. Two. Three. Okay, now we're on the fifth single crochet, so we're going to switch and pick up our black yarn and finish out the stitch, tighten everything up, pull our red yarn in, and now we're going to use our black yarn for a bobble stitch. And go like you're gonna make a single crochet in the next stitch. 
but we are going to finish it out with the red yarn instead of the black. Now we will be working over our black yarn for the rest of this row. We're going to do a bobble stitch and then a single crochet with the red yarn six more times. So bobble single one, bobble single two, bobble single three, six more times. And then on the sixth single crochet, we're going to switch and pick up our black yarn. And remember to crochet over the black yarn for these next six. That's one. Two. Three. I'm gonna give this guy a tug to make sure he's taut underneath there. Six, give this guy a tug. You don't want to clench, like clench it up. And before you pull too tight, it all gets clenched over here. That's not what you want. You just want it taut. Go like you're going to make a single crochet in the next stitch, but finish it out with the black yarn. Pulling our red back to the inside. We're going to do a black bobble in the next stitch. So like we're gonna go for a single crochet and then finish out with red instead. Now working over our black yarn again, we are going to bobble single crochet with red for another six times. Okay, now I'm going to pull my black yarn taut and straighten it up underneath all of these stitches. I feel like I'm gonna make my sixth single crochet, but finish it out with my black yarn. Pull my red yarn to the inside. We're gonna do a bobble stitch with our black yarn here. So like we're gonna make a single crochet in the last stitch, but finish it out with our red. Join into the top of our first stitch. Chain one and turn our work. You can go ahead and clip your black tail now we're going to start row eight. We're going to increase in the first stitch, then single crochet in the next three stitches. We're going to repeat that for a total of 10 times, giving us a total of 50 stitches in this row. And we are going to end on a single crochet, not a single crochet increase um, like before. So we're going to start with an increase. Then single crochet in the next three stitches. That's one. We're going to do that nine more times for a total of 10 repeats and 50 single crochet stitches around. Work 
48, 49, 50. Join into the top of your first single crochet and chain one. For row nine, we're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch around for a total of, again, 50 single crochets. So no increases in row nine. 47, 48, 49, 50. Join into the top of the first single crochet and chain one. Now for row 10, we are going to increase in the first stitch, then single crochet in the next four stitches. We're gonna repeat that for a total of 10 times, giving us a total of 60 single crochet stitches in the row. We start by increasing in our first stitch, then single crochet in the next four stitches, that's one, we're going to do that nine more times, increase and then a single crochet in the last four stitches. Going into the top of our first single crochet, chain one, and now we're going to turn our work and get ready for row 11, which is another bobble row. For row 11, we are going to bobble in the first stitch, single crochet in the next stitch. We're gonna do that three times. And in the third single crochet, we're going to pick up our black yarn. So we're gonna bobble in the first stitch, Single crochet, that's one, two more. That's two. We're gonna start our single crochet, but we're gonna finish it out by grabbing our black yarn. the red yarn to the inside and now make a bobble stitch in the next stitch with your black yarn go into the next stitch like you're gonna make a single crochet but finish it out by pulling the black to the inside and taking your red both loops on your hook. Now we're going to be working over the black yarn while we make our red bobbles. That way the black is ready for us to pick it back up when we need it. We are going to bobble and single crochet seven times with our red yarn working over our black yarn and then on the seventh single crochet we're going to pick up our black yarn again. Okay, for our seventh single crochet, I'm gonna make sure the black is taut. Go into the next stitch with my red, pull up a loop, but I'm going to pull through with my black instead of my red. Pull my red back to the side of my work and make my next bobble stitch with the black yarn. Insert your hook into the next stitch like you're going to make a single crochet, but instead pick up your red yarn and pull through two. Working with our red yarn and over our black yarn, we're going to bobble single crochet for a total of three, three more times. Before we do the third single crochet, we're going to make sure our black yarn is taut. And then finish 
finish out the single crochet by pulling through our black and moving the red to this side. Do a bobble stitch with the black yarn in the next stitch. Insert your hook and pull up a loop in the next stitch like you're going for a single crochet, but instead of finishing it out, we're going to grab our red yarn and another one pull through both loops. Now working over our black yarn and using our red yarn, we're going to bobble single crochet seven more times. Before we do our seventh single crochet, we're going to pull our black yarn taut. Insert our hook, grab our yarn, pull up a loop, drop our red, grab our black, pull through both loops on our hook, pull our red to the inside, and make a bobble stitch with our black yarn in the next stitch. Start a single crochet in the next stitch, but drop our black, pick up our red to finish it out. Now you can just let your black yarn dangle and we will cut it here in a minute. We're going to finish out the row with just our red yarn for a bobble single crochet for six more times. Do not have to be working around your black yarn this, this part. It's one. Two, four more to go. Okay, now we're coming on our last single crochet. Join into the top of the first stitch. Chain one and turn your work. Go ahead and snip off your black yarn and set that aside. And we're gonna do row 12. We're gonna start with an increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next five stitches. Repeat that for a total of 10 times, giving us a total of 70 single crochet stitches in the row. Increase in the first stitch, two, three, four, five single crochets in the next five stitches, one in the next five stitches. Repeat that nine more times. Join into the top of the first single crochet. and chain one. For row 13, we're just gonna do one single crochet in each stitch around, again for a total of 70 single crochets in the row. Okay, join back into the top of our first single crochet, and chain one. For row 14, we're going to increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next six stitches. We're going to repeat that for a total of 10 times, giving us a total of 80 single crochets in the row. Increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next six stitches. Repeat that nine more times, that whole hunk. Join in the top of the first single crochet. Chain one and turn your work. This is going to be our last bobble row. 
And then after that, we just have a few more rows of single crochets and then we're ready to attach to our ring. We're gonna start by putting a red puff stitch right here in the first stitch. Then go like we're gonna make a single crochet, but instead of finishing it out, we're gonna grab our black. Pull our red to the inside. And now we are going to make a bobble stitch with our black yarn. Go in the next stitch like we're gonna make a single crochet, but instead of finishing it, drop the black, pick up the red, Now working over our black, bobble stitch, single crochet, six times. Okay, one more red bobble. Pull our black yarn and make sure it's nice and taut underneath all of these red bobble stitches. Go into our next stitch like we're gonna make a single crochet. Instead of finishing it off, we're gonna pick up our black and pull through two. Pull our red to the inside and make a black bobble in the next stitch. Go into the next stitch like we're gonna make a single crochet, drop our black, pick up our red. Now we're gonna be working over our black with our red. So bobble stitch, single crochet, that's one. Bobble stitch, single crochet, two. Bobble stitch, single crochet, three. We're gonna do it three times before we switch back to our black. Okay, before we do our next single crochet, I'm just gonna pull this black yarn, make sure everything is nice and clean underneath these stitches. Go for the single crochet, but drop our red, pick up our black, pull through, pull our red to the front, and twist it. Using my black yarn, I'm going to bobble in the next stitch, Go into the next stitch like I'm gonna make a single crochet. Drop my black, pick up my red. There we go. Now working over the black yarn, we're going to bobble and single crochet with our red five times. Before I do the single crochet, just gonna pull my black yarn, make sure it's nice and taut. Start my single crochet, drop my red, pick up my black, finish out the stitch, pull the red to the inside, and now make a bobble stitch with our black yarn. Go like we're gonna make a single crochet, drop our black, pick our red back up. Now we are going to work over our black with our red yarn for five puff and single crochet repeats. Before I make the single crochet, I'm gonna give my black tail a pull, make sure it's nice and snug. Single crochet in the next stitch. Drop our red, pick up our black. 
pull our red to the front and now bobble stitch in the next row in the next stitch with our black yarn go for the single crochet drop our black pick our red back up Now we are going to bobble single crochet with red over our black three more times. Pull our black yarn, go for the single crochet in the next stitch, drop our red, pull up our black, pull our red to the front. Now we're going to bobble stitch with our black. Go in the next stitch for a single crochet, but drop the black, pull the red back up, finish the stitch. Now we're going to bobble single crochet with our red stitch, red yarn working over our black for five stitches, or five repeats. Tighten our black yarn. single crochet in the next stitch, drop our red, pick up our black, pull the red to the front, bobble with our black in the next stitch, go for the single crochet, drop our black, Take our red back up. And now we are going to finish out the rest of the row with just our red for five more bobble, bobble stitch single crochet repeats. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my black yarn. Single crochet in the last stitch. Join into the top of our first stitch, chain one, and turn our work. For row 16, we're going to increase in the first stitch, then single crochet in the next seven stitches. We're going to repeat that 10 times for a total of 90 single crochet stitches in the round. Join into the top of our first single crochet, chain one. For row 17, we're just going to single crochet one time in each stitch around, again for a total of 90 single crochets. And then for row 18, we're going to attach our watermelon onto our metal ring. Going into the top of our first single crochet and chain one. Now you're going to want to grab your metal ring. This is a 10 inch metal ring. You can get them off of Amazon through the link provided in the blog post or you can purchase them at Hobby Lobby and I think Michaels has them as well. For row 18 we are going to increase in the first stitch single crochet in the next stitch. Repeat that all the way around for a total of 135 single crochet stitches and we will be working around the metal ring while we are going into the stitches of the watermelon slice. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to increase in the first stitch. So we're going to go in like we're getting ready to start our stitch but before we grab our yarn we're just going to move our metal ring just on top of our hook and then grab our yarn around it. There's our increase and then we're gonna single crochet in the next stitch. 
still working around the ring. Increase in the next stitch. Single crochet in the next stitch. And we're gonna do this all the way around until we get back to our first stitch. Join into the top and then we can tie off our yarn and start sewing in all of our tails and then we can go make our pom-poms. Okay, it's starting to get a little um, weird to work with, so I'm just going to stretch it out. And then keep going. Keep moving it around your ring and pulling it in the direction it's going to be going and that will help it stay stretched. I think the watermelon version is a little harder to get around your ring because of the times that we pull our black under these stitches that has less stretch than not doing that. So you could probably, if this is getting too hard for you, you could probably jump up to an H, which is a five millimeter crochet hook and do the whole thing all over again um, with an H instead of a four and a half. If you're doing a solid color or solid skein, I should say, it could be a variegated color and you're it won't be as, as difficult to stretch onto the ring at this point. I really think it's from carrying our black yarn under our red puff stitches. We almost got it. And I'm just going to put one extra stitch right there. That's going to make me at 136 instead of 135, but it really doesn't matter how many stitches you have around on the outside. I just don't want that to leave a gap. So I'm just going to make one more stitch go in there, even though that's not really where you should put a stitch. Join into the top of our first single crochet. And we can cut our yarn. Now I'm going to use my tapestry needle to sew in all of these tails, starting in the center and working my way out. Do a couple of them here with you guys on video and then I will do the rest off screen.
before you tie in your black tails just give it a tight little tug so everything just kind of tightens up around it and do that for all of your black tails I will come back after I finish sewing in the rest of my tails and we will make our pom-poms. Now that we have all of our tails sewn in for our watermelon, we are going to start making our pom-poms. I will be using two different colors of green. I'll make three pom-poms with this color and two pom-poms with this color. We'll start with this one which is called Limelight. I will be using my Clover 65 millimeter pom-pom maker. This thing comes in a set with three other pom-pom makers. This is the second largest. There is one larger than this, but this makes a good size pom-pom. In my opinion, obviously you can do any size pom-pom you would like. Feel free to get creative with different pom-pom sizes. They're all made the same way using, um, if you use one of these, they're all made the same way. We're also going to need our scissors for this, and the sharper your scissors, the better. So to start, you're going to open one of the arms or legs, I don't remember which one I called it in the pattern. I, I called it either a leg or an arm, I don't remember, but you're going to open it. And then you're going to take your yarn and begin wrapping it around your leg. I'm going to call it a leg. It's probably arm in the pattern, though, my luck. You're going to wrap it around just like this. and then you're gonna come back. Once you get back, you can let go of that guy because it's not gonna unravel on you. And then we're gonna go again. This is our third pass down the leg. I'm going to come back again for four. I like to try to remember how many passes I do so I can do the same thing on the other leg. That way my pom-pom is not lopsided. And five. For six. And seven. for eight, back up this way. And let's end with nine, going back down this way. Now we are going to close this leg and open this leg and keep going. If you had ended on this side, you can just cut your yarn and grab it again. But since we ended on this side, I'm just going to keep going. Sorry. 
Seven. Eight. Nine. Okay, close that leg. Now we're going to cut our yarn. Scoot this aside. Now we're going to take our scissors right in between these two lines right here and cut apart all the way up to this side, all those little strands. And the pom-pom holder is gonna hold them together for us. We're just gonna stick our scissors right here and you'll be able to see the little plastic spot that's made just for your scissors to go. That way they glide through there nicely. And sharp scissors are way better for this than dull scissors. If you try to use dull scissors, you will get a forearm workout. I'm just gonna Turn it and continue cutting all the way up through this way, making sure to get all of the strands of yarn. Okay, now we're going to cut a piece of our green yarn that's rather long because we were going to use it to tie up our palm, but then also to attach it to our wall hanger. So the longer is better than too short. Wrap your yarn around the, the top of the pom-pom. Then we're going to pull it down between those two plastic pieces and come around this way and pull it tight making sure it gets really down in there in between the plastic pieces because it's hugging around your yarn on the inside of that thing. Now we are going to tie it as tight as we can. I like to do a, um, I don't even know what this is called, but instead of just going one time like that, we're gonna go two times. And that's gonna help when we pull our yarn down there, it won't come back up when we let go. It helps it stay. I always tie my knots like this ever since I learned that little trick. So you're going to pull it all the way down in there. Do not break your yarn. <laughs> that happens a lot. So just pull it as tight as you can without breaking your yarn and then go ahead and double knot it to secure it. And then I like to come back around this way and do it again. Now these will come apart if they are put in the washer or dryer, I think. And if you pull at these, this is not a permanent, I mean, it's a very dainty structure. The only way to make them not like unbreakable is to sew it closed, like run a needle and thread through all of the, the different fibers of the yarn strands or to use hot glue as you wrap, so like wrap and glue, wrap and glue, which I've never seen it done with a pom-pom maker, but as long as you don't fool with them, and for a wall hanger, you shouldn't be fooling with them. It should just be hanging on the wall, so. Now that you've got your, all of these little, these little guys tied securely, we can open the legs of our pom-pom maker, and then just pull these two pieces, like this side and this side, just pull them apart and your pom-pom pops out. And then you can put those right back together to get ready for your next one because you're gonna need lots of these. And then I like to give my pom-poms just a good shaking. And you can see what we've got. There's a few weird little stragglies and you can just trim it. Now don't get too trim crazy because once you get started, it's like toddlers cutting hair. They, as soon as they start seeing that hair drop, they can't stop. 
So just get the ones that are really sticking out weird or you'll be trimming your pom-pom down to nothing. Okay, and after you get your palm the way you like it, you can set it aside and make two more of this color and two of your other color of green. So we're going to have five total palms and we're going to tie them onto our wall hanger. Okay, now that we have all of our five pom poms made and trimmed, we are going to attach them to our watermelon wall hanger. I like to start in the middle and work my way out. And we are going to want to put them along an area that has fewer seeds. So we're going to leave all of these pretty seeds at the top and we're going to come down here for our pom poms. You'll still be able to see the seeds, but um, this way you're only hiding just a couple, a little bit. So we're gonna flip this to the back side. Grab your crochet hook, and you're gonna wanna pull the tails of your pom-pom up from the front to the back. Insert your hook, grab your tail and pull it through, and then go one, two stitches over Insert your hook, grab your other tail, pull it through, and now you can tie these guys on. One, two, pull tight, and then another one to keep it secure. And then I'm just going to tie it in a bow to get it, the strings out of my way, but we will be sewing these in here in a little bit. And then we've got these on each side, and we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna split this palm on these two guys right here. And one, two, and this guy. Tie it on. I'll just throw that up there. And let's go this way. One, two, three, four, five. So right here. And one, two, right here. Two more. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. One more palm and then we can get started working on our fringe. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna go right here. And then one, two, right here. That was quick and painless. Now we have to sew in all of these tails, just so the back of our wall hanger isn't all messy, but I can do that off camera and just go ahead and start working on some fringe so you guys can see that. You're gonna wanna start by getting your two green yarns that you use to make your palms, your scissors, and then if you want to, you can get a template of some sort so you're, to make your fringe making process faster, but also make your fringe all the same length. And I will be using my Happy Planner. 
This is actually last year's Happy Planner, but it works really well as a fringe template. It is a little over 12 inches. I'd say maybe even 14. 13 to 14 inches. So then when we wrap our fringe around, it'd be double that. And then when we loop it onto our wall hanger, it'd be about this long each piece of fringe. So I'm going to show you how to wrap it around. I don't know how many we need of each color right off the top of my head, but just do a, do a few and then attach them and then do a few and then attach them and we will get it figured out. Here's how you're going to want to make your fringe or here's how I make my fringe. Start over here in the corner and hold it down with your thumb and then gently wrap around your um, template and keep wrapping. Don't pull it as tight as you can because then everything will get a little wonky. And you have to keep holding your first one on there or the whole thing will unravel. You could tape it if it bothers you that bad. Okay, after you get some on there, we can cut our yarn and I will just be running, sorry, running my scissors along down here. That's why another reason why this binder does so good because there's room for your scissors to go and you can just cut and then you have all these lovely pieces of fringe and they're all about the same size. Okay, after we cut all of our fringe, we can attach it to our wall hanger. I like to start right here in the middle and work my way out. And we're going to use each pom-pom to try to gauge our amount of yarn that we're going to do. Go in from the back like that. Fold a piece of your fringe yarn in half. Grab the loop and pull it through. Okay, so I'm going to turn and work this way. This is easier for me. And then grab your fringe again and pull through the loop. There. And we're just going to do that and all of these stitches right on top of this light green palm and I'm putting the dark green fringe on the light green palm. Grab your fringe yarn, fold it in half, Put your hook into the back side of the wall hanger and out the front. Grab your loop, pull it, grab it, pull through, give it a nice tug. And you're going to do that all the way down until you get enough fringe to cover that lime green pom pom. And then we will switch to our lime green fringe to cover the green pom-pom and so on. After I get them all spaced the way I like them and one fringe string in each stitch, I like to go back and add another fringe string into every couple of stitches or so just to make it fuller. But if we do this first before we start adding more strings in, we'll at least know how many stitches are going to be each color of fringe. I used to do this without a crochet hook. I'll show you. Last summer when I did fringe, I didn't realize I could use my crochet hook. So I would go like that and then come through and grab it. I feel like it's faster with the crochet hook. One of my patterns actually has that in the instructions to use your fingers just in case somebody had never done any fringe before and they didn't know how to attach it. I think it's faster with the crochet hook though. It's a little like soothing to sit here and fringe things. I like repetitive tasks. Okay, how many is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
Let me see. Nine. So it looks like we have nine fringe per pom pom. Um, but I think I think we're gonna need to put another one in this side right here. We're gonna go for ten. This guy and start with our green and do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten green ones and see how they look. Sometimes I have to go back and move things around just to make it symmetrical all the way down. Hopefully, just doing the ten stitches in front of each palm will be correct and we won't have to go back and move anything around. If we do, though, it's not hard to pull out a piece of Friend, you just grab the loop that's on the front and give it a tug and it'll just come right out if you do end up needing to move things around. And then let's see what this is looking like on the front when we don't have all this mess to look at. Looking pretty good. Now this was just a design idea. You could do your fringe differently. You could match up green, lime green under a lime green and vice versa. Or you could do blended palms where you mix the lime green and the dark green totally up to you this is just how I decided to do it and I'm going to continue adding fringe 10 stitches under each palm and then I'm probably going to go back and add some uh, extra pieces in between these so some of these stitches will have two fringes on them instead of just one to make it fuller so in my tails and then this guy will be finished <laughs> 